So when it comes to social movements in the media, it is known that they are interlocking systems. Whether the media has portrayed Planned Parenthood as negative or positive, the media has played an important part in its standing as a social movement organization. In order to understand the relationship between media and social movements, let's talk about the three main concepts associated with the media and social movements as a whole. The first concept is mobilization. Mobilization means movements must reach their constituency through some form of public discourse, the social movement's own publication and meetings, but also the mass media. Planned Parenthood reaches their constituents through protests, speech, and commercials. In this commercial that we will show in a little bit, we see that a woman did not go through an abortion, a service provided by Planned Parenthood. She was actually grateful that Planned Parenthood saved her son and gave her that choice of keeping him. The woman in this video clearly states that if she had went to a back alley abortion place, then she nor her son would have possibly been alive today. Let's take a look at the video. I found out I was pregnant and it was not planned. My boyfriend and I were in a very new relationship. The most pragmatic option was to get an abortion. And I honestly was very conflicted. And I remember going in, and I was still very torn about it. And when I went in to see the actual physician, I was still a wreck. She took a, a look at me and said, something tells me that today is not the day. Go home, take a night's sleep on it, and then reschedule. As we saw in this video, Planned Parenthood used a person that does not have a leadership role, but instead used someone who used their services to reach others and gain their support just like her. I think that example is great to see how someone that isn't a leader was used in the movement. Let's take a different look at how Planned Parenthood used a leader. I'm going to talk about how Planned Parenthood was portrayed in the media and the controversy over fetus parts that was previously mentioned. Taking it back to the extremist groups who have made up the idea that Planned Parenthood was selling illegal fetus parts for research created a stir in the media. I want to focus more on how these extremist groups use the media to make others think Planned Parenthood is an organization that kills unborn babies to gain anti-abortion supporters. And how this is an example of scope enlargement. Scope enlargement is about making a conflict more public, which offers an opportunity for the movement to improve its relative power and gain the sympathy of third parties. Planned Parenthood was betrayed in a negative way, yet it allowed Planned Parenthood to get more media attention. Of course, later, the president of Planned Parenthood, Cecile Richards, was able to defend the organization in a speech by saying Planned Parenthood does not sell fetus parts illegally, but that it does give away fetus parts for research with the consent of the mother. The fact that it was such a controversial issue talked about in the news gave Planned Parenthood the opportunity to defend itself and garner more supporters while doing so. Because the media cast light on the Planned Parenthood's con abortion controversy, it brought even more targets or opponents to recognize the movement and negotiate with them on why they want to defund Planned Parenthood in, term of it, in terms of its abortion practices. This leads it to the last reason movements need the media, validation. Arlene, please explain to us what validation means. Well, validation is another important factor in the media and its relationship with social movements because getting media attention validates that a movement is an important player. How does this tie into Planned Parenthood though? Here's how. The media showed protesters on both sides. 
Planned Parenthood supporters and people against this organization as well. This showed that Planned Parenthood speaks for other issues besides abortion. However, many other individuals choose to focus on abortion. I'll explain a little more on what I mean by that, but first, let's look at this video. because it can influence more than one issue, more than one social movement at that. In this video, it showed that this SMO was influencing the 2016 elections as well as the Women's March. Individuals in this video, whether they were supporters or not, spoke about how they cared about where tax dollars were going. Others talked about women reproductive health services. These are two of the main topics we have already discussed earlier, but I thought it would be important to mention again as these topics always seem to come up whether Planned Parenthood is involved in a protest, commercial, or news program, simply in media overall, which is what we want to end on. As we have seen in these three videos, Planned Parenthood used very different people. They used a beneficiary, a person who used their services, and on the second video, they chose to use a leader like Cecil Richards to address criticism. In the third video, however, we saw how the media just gives a spotlight to social movements as a whole, but how the SMOs respond to certain issues depend on how they are being portrayed in the media. Sometimes they are portrayed negatively, sometimes positively, sometimes they are simply mentioned during a protest, and it's up to the viewer to determine if they agree or disagree with with an organization and the causes the organizations are fighting for. What are your last thoughts on that, Vanessa? You know, well, I think from everything that we've discussed tonight, an organization such as Planned Parenthood does need very diverse people to have different ideas on how to recruit people and how to respond in using the media for its advantage. I think that wraps up on our segment on the social movement organization, Planned Parenthood. Thank you for watching. And I hope you tune in next time. I am Vanessa Renderos. And I am Arlene Lemus. And, and this, this is AMB.